If you could follow just one roadmap to achieve financial independence, would you take it? The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins might be that game changer you've been looking for. There are lots of personal finance books out there and I've read a ton of them. But The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins stands out as a game changer. In this video, I'll break down the 10 most powerful lessons that I learned from the book and I believe that it can transform your financial journey. This book will answer questions, provide clear and actionable insights if you're struggling to make sense of your finances and looking for a simple but effective strategy. Also, if you want to understand how to invest wisely without getting lost in all the jargon. And lastly, if you're curious about how to achieve financial independence and freedom. If any of this is you, then I recommend that you read The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. Without any delay, let's dive into the 10 lessons. The first lesson is to avoid debt and its burden. In today's society, especially in developed countries like the UK and the US, debt is usually viewed as a normal thing. In fact, debt is the glue that binds this society with the numerous products like credit cards, buy now, pay later, payday loans, just to name a few. Many of us actually use debt as a ticket to the good life. It's no longer about asking the question, can I afford it? Instead, we ask, can I make the monthly payment? And I don't know if you spot the difference there because you can make the monthly payment, but that doesn't mean that you can actually afford that thing that you want to buy. What we fail to realize is that there is a steep price, a very steep price to pay with debt that is much more than interest rates. Have you imagined how many people are slaves to a job that they hate just because of debt? Trust me, it's a lot. When we say FI is freedom or financial independence is freedom, the flip side also means that debt is slavery. And don't make debt the norm, especially those terrible ones like credit card, payday loans and buy now pay later. It's generally acceptable to have debt like mortgage but even with that you need to be very careful and smart when you are taking on this debt. The second lesson is to actually ignore market news. This is a very important lesson, ignoring market news, especially financial market news. In the financial world, there is always someone proclaiming that the sky is falling or there is a recession that would wipe you out or the stock market is about to crash or inflation is going to destroy your finances. But the question is, why do we constantly hear these bad stories? And if you want to know the answer, the answer is very simple and it's right in front of your eyes. It's all about money. Yes, money. There is a lot of profit in talking about economic doomsday scenarios and all that scary stuff. And actually, these scary headlines grab people's attention and that translates to selling the products and translates to making money. The truth is, nobody can really predict the future. But watching the news often will lead to you having worry and you panicking, which can cause you to make poor financial decisions. Trust me, save yourself the headache and don't get caught up in any short-term noise. Ignore market news altogether and instead focus on long-term fundamentals and keep your emotions in check. What's the advantage to this approach? This approach would help you stay the course and build wealth and that's what you want to do. The third lesson is actually the importance of simplicity. Personal finance is very powerful because of what it can do but learning it can be tough and I would have to admit that. Some would even call it that it's boring or they would say I just don't get it. Either of this means the same. What this book does, the simple path to wealth is that it simplifies personal finance for you and fun fact, this channel also does that. So if you have not, like and subscribe. In the words of J.O. Collins, simple is simply more powerful and that's because simple gets you the best results. For example, you only need to invest in a simple index funds for a long term to make wealth. But the fact that personal finance can be that simple 
doesn't mean it's easy and all you have to do is to look at yourself and all the other people around you the fourth lesson is to master money money is a topic that can feel intimidating complex or daunting just like i said in the last point especially if you didn't grow up discussing money but here's the truth money is one of the most powerful tools that we have to navigate this complex world and if you understand it you can use it to your advantage but if you don't understand it it will control you in the book jail collins emphasizes that we shouldn't shy away from money or money discussions so instead of burying your head in the sand you know like the ostrich hoping that your financial issues will magically resolve what we need to do is to take active steps to learn about money you know just take one step in front of you and take the next step and this doesn't mean that you have to become a financial expert overnight but understanding the basics can make a massive massive difference in your finance and i hope that this channel is helping you do just that the truth is learning about money isn't as hard as it seems just a few days of reading and understanding the concepts in the book watching videos in this channel will put you ahead of 85 percent of people when it comes to finance and another thing that isn't hard and makes a massive difference is to hit the like button and to subscribe we are all about making personal finance simple and building wealth so if that's something that you're interested in please do hit the like button and do subscribe it means the world to me thank you the fifth lesson is to marry right this is another key takeaway that i love from the book because the importance of marrying well and avoiding fiscally irresponsible people cannot be overstated fun fact about the book is the book is a collection of a series of blog posts by jl collins writing to his daughter so it makes sense that he has written about marrying well because you can't think about training up your daughter having the right things in place for her and then she marries the wrong person and squanders that because nothing would destroy your world faster than letting someone that is irresponsible have access to it and that's what marriage does and you can easily spot this kind of people according to jl collins because they are often experts in wasting their own money and will likely do the same with yours. They will also employ various tactics to gain access to your money. So your best bet is actually to avoid them. Seek the alternative. The alternative is to actually get a partner that would actually contribute positively to your financial journey. I believe that this principle extends beyond money. It also extends to other areas of our life. Seek people that will make us better. The fact is, and many people don't think about this, is that your choice of a life partner has one of the greatest impacts on your life more than your career where you live how much you make the truth is marrying someone who doesn't share your financial values can lead to a lot of pain and conflict so when dating it's important to have money conversations early on don't leave it to later in the relationship and you don't need to have like carbon copy of every detail between the both of you you just need to agree on the broader financial direction just to be sure that you're going in the right place and if you're already married it's important to have regular transparent money discussions the sixth lesson is financial independence as the ultimate goal jl collins said this there are many things that money can buy but the most valuable of all is freedom and this is what financial independence gets you freedom to chart your own path in a way that would not be possible if you had to work for money it's not about having millions or billions of dollars or pounds in your bank account but in first knowing what is enough and secondly focusing on what is truly important to you if you can know these two things you can find out what your financial independence number is the seventh is index funds are the best investments the book emphasizes the importance of index funds in fact it says that you only need one fund and it can't be more simple than that and that fund is the vanguard total stock market index known as BTSX. this was my biggest takeaway when i first read the book so immediately i moved to the uk guess what i just looked for the uk version of this fund and i got stuck into it if you don't know what an index fund is i made a video explaining all about index funds and also if you're new to investing i've got videos in our investing playlist that walks you through 
what the first steps and explains all the concepts about investing so check that out this fund is actually like a set and forget fund and historically this fund have shown to beat over 80 percent of active money managers and these active money managers have higher fees associated with them so it's a win-win for you you're making more money and also the cost is way way cheaper the downside to investing in this index fund is that it's actually boring it's not as exciting as picking stocks but if you ask me what do you want do you want exciting or you want to make more money even if it's simple you want simple and it can't be more simple than this one fund and you're done the eighth lesson is to control your lifestyle the book argues that if you want financial freedom or financial independence the number one thing you have to do is to control your lifestyle the first step to controlling your lifestyle is to control your expenses this means living below your means and avoiding debt and to do this we must track our spending to see where our money is actually going and then with that knowledge you make the necessary adjustments as needed it doesn't matter how much you earn whether it's thirty thousand pounds or per year or it's one million pounds per year if you spend all you earn you would never be free and you would never reach financial independence the goal with this lesson is to first have an honest conversation with yourself and secondly you track and review your expenses and lastly you put something aside for investments for your future self the ninth lesson would be that you should be your own financial advisor and this is another big lesson you know you're just simply saying you don't need a financial advisor and it's tempting to think that mastering your money means finding a smart financial investor to manage all your investments but J.O. Collins points out a significant problem with this approach and what is that problem the issue is that many financial advisors or investment advisors their interests often don't align with your interest so while your goal is to secure the best possible return and to ensure that you're comfortable in the future many of these advisors are primarily interested in earning a commission and in making money for themselves so there is a misalignment that can lead to the financial advisor giving you advice that will suit him more instead of benefiting you and this is not a conspiracy theory i've spent many years in the finance industry but the finance industry works very hard to make it seem investing is complex they want you to believe that you need a professional to do this to navigate the financial world and there are people that actually need this service but majority of the people don't actually need this service they promise to beat the market but many of them actually don't and that's what the data shows the truth is many people don't need a financial advisor to succeed by following the simple advice that's laid out in the book a simple path to wealth you can learn to invest on your own and become wealthy by taking the time to learn those basics you can actually become your own financial advisor and that's why i advise for you to become your own financial advisor so even when you have to talk to someone else you're not just dumping your whole finances on that person you're actually guiding the person and it's more of a collaborative effort you know what they're saying and you're contributing to it as against to just telling the person to invest as they like and if you're part of the 90 percent that don't need a financial advisor why not save yourself money in terms of fees and commission and put a lot of that into your pocket and control your own financial destiny the tenth lesson is to understand the difference between the wealth accumulation stage and the wealth preservation stage if you look at your financial journey it's made up of two phases and each of them require different strategies and approaches those two phases are the wealth accumulation stage and the wealth preservation stage the wealth accumulation stage is all about building your financial assets during this phase you're actively saving investing growing your wealth and Collins emphasized the importance of living below your means during this stage and saving a significant portion of your income he advocates adopting a frugal lifestyle prioritizing investing and savings instead of overspending in this stage you should actually be aggressive with your investment 100 percent stocks nothing less and the goal here is to maximize growth and take advantage of compounding over time and that's why it pains me when i see people in this phase 
investing in their pension and they don't know what's invested in and you see that they are invested in 60% stocks, 30% bond and 10% cash when you're just 25 and you should be going 100% stocks. So if you haven't done that, please look at what you're invested in in your pension and make that adjustment if you're in the wealth accumulation stage. Once you have accumulated significant wealth and you are approaching retirement or you're approaching financial independence, then you transition to a wealth preservation stage where your focus now shifts from building wealth to protecting and preserving what you've already built. This stage typically begins when you have enough assets that is able to sustain your desired lifestyle at retirement. In the wealth preservation stage, the book recommends adjusting your portfolio to reduce risks, so reducing the amount of stocks. And in this stage, typically this is when you introduce bonds and cash into your portfolio. A common strategy that he recommended in the book is to hold 75% stocks, 20% bond and 5% in cash. This allocation would help protect your wealth from market volatility while still growing because of the stock part of it. Understanding these two stages, adjusting your strategy accordingly is very, very key to achieving and maintaining your financial independence. So whether you are in the wealth accumulation phase that is focused on growth or you are in the wealth preservation stage that is focused on protecting what you've already built, knowing where you stand is very important and not just knowing, taking actions that suits each of those stages is very crucial. If you've enjoyed this video, I believe you would also enjoy this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It means a lot to us. See you in the next one.